What can lawyers and mediators do when mediation, negotiations or collaborations result in partial but not total agreements? Most family law property mediations and other types of dispute resolution processes do result in agreements being reached. Sometimes, however, clients can reach partial agreements but not complete agreements. The clients might have worked hard. They might have exchanged important information to help each other make some good decisions. They might have properly explored and explained what's important to them about the issues of the matter. They might have been able to generate a number of different options. They may have been able to agree upon some of those options as being the solution to their particular issues, but not have sorted out all of the issues. So what can lawyers and mediators do to help clients in that situation? Well, there's a number of things they can do for them. They could firstly remind the clients they have agreed upon a number of important issues because clients often forget that and just focus on what they haven't agreed to. Lawyers and mediators could remind clients about what are the issues outstanding and maybe explore with them what can we do to try and sort out some of those issues. For example, if the data issue, it's a matter of talking about well, what's the missing bit of data and where we can get it from in a way that's going to be satisfactory to both of you. Sometimes clients just run out of steam or energy or focus and the solution might be to set up a second, maybe shorter, focused mediation session to deal with the outstanding issues. You can add to that, possibly, taking more of an evaluative approach to that second session. Maybe bring along a second mediator who's being invited to provide that evaluative perspective to the process. Another option which clients have in that situation, where they've reached partial but not complete agreements, is to commit themselves to what has been agreed and put the discrete outstanding issues to an arbitrator to make a binding and enforceable arbitral award. The clients haven't wasted the hard work they've done in reaching those partial agreements. They've retained control of those things they choose to reach agreements about. They also retain control about the process of the arbitration. And there's research around how if clients feel they've got some control about the outcome, and if clients feel they've got some control over the process, they're going to be a lot more willing to accept the determinative outcome to readily enough implement it, even if that outcome doesn't quite match what they might have hoped it might have been. That type of arbitration process dealing with discrete issues can be dealt with quite time efficiently and cost efficiently. For an arbitration law to be binding and enforceable as a decree of the family court, then the arbitrator has to be selected from one of the two lists kept by AFLAM, the Australian Institute of Family Law Arbitrators and Mediators. There's two lists. The first list is of those arbitrators who satisfy the requirements for expertise in family law and have done the AFLAM training. The second list requires that the arbitrators, like me, also complete university studies in arbitration and satisfy an assessment process at a university standard to demonstrate their expertise in the arbitration process. To engage in arbitration, there doesn't need to be court proceedings. You can do arbitration whilst court proceedings are underway, but you can also do an arbitration with any court proceedings at all. So collaborative practitioners might consider that they're able to assist their collaborative clients through an arbit arbitration agreement to sort out the remaining outstanding discrete issues without being barred from doing so by the conditions in their collaborative agreements about not helping clients go through the court process. Arbitration is also an option to consider when mediation is not thought to be appropriate or where clients want the certainty of an outcome, which of course cannot be guaranteed through a mediation or a collaborative process. Also for the arbitral award to be binding and enforceable, both parties need to consent and they need to understand the arbitration process to properly consent to engaging in it. You might want to have a look at my other video about how you get an arbitration started or my blog about how to go about having those discussions with clients about arbitration as one of the dispute resolution processes. Those resources might help mediators and lawyers discuss the option of arbitration with clients where mediation has resulted in partial but not complete agreements. Thank you.